what is it that made you push on to go to the event of the events, the Olympics once again? I finally made a finals at Worlds. So now I am on a medal hunt for this Olympics. And hopefully fourth time is the charm. So <laughs> and this, technically this fourth time is like the third time. Yeah. One of the times was yeah, really, you see? You know? yeah, you see. So we still on we still on track. You looking for a husband? Oh, I don't believe in marriage. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> there ends the show. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that one. Let let me explain it to you. Because I watch so much stuff where uh, it don't work out. Sometimes the prenup don't be successful. I believe in marriage if you have more assets than me. So if you have more assets than me, baby, we could work this out. (laughs) Mm, Justin, bring the whole table, boy. All right. Welcome back, everyone, to the Fanatic Islanders, your home for sports and sports entertainment. We have another legend in the building today. How does keep happening? Wait, this is hey. we on a running. Uh, this is this is Anthony Strong, one of the best sprinters in the world. Top tail. Bahamian. This is born. Name been running through the bomb since B A I S S. Real talk. How you feeling today? How you feeling today? Yeah, unfortunately, she went to that school on Burn Road, but yeah, I'm angry. Oh, so we ain't saw no war. <laughs> she listening to you. <laughs> she trying to figure out what you said. <laughs> How you feeling? How you feeling? Good. Just a little bit tired. I had um training this week, so my coach clearly thought I was a robot, so. Let the people know where you training at. I was about to say... Right now, I'm in Kingston, Jamaica. I train with MVP Athletics, well, track and field. And for those who don't know who MVP are, it's the track club that Sharika Jackson is a part of. If you don't know who she is, we know. (laughs) (laughs) They they haven't been attention. Yeah, they they haven't been attention. Yeah. <laughs> so what exactly they got you doing over there? You running mountains and thing and all type of stuff? Oh no, my my coach no. I I am very stubborn in my personality and I will not do no such thing. <laughs> Why are you running no mountains, mate? <laughs> I do not run at those inclines. My job is to stay to the left. Sprint, sprint. Mm-hmm. Stay to the left. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. So what they got you eating? You eating your yams and your and your fish. And all that good stuff. Uh, I, I'm actually probably the only person that's from the Caribbean that's allergic to fish. So. Wait, 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 wait. Tell me. Al- <laughs> like, aller- allergic? Yes. It got worse over the years. But now with medicine and stuff like that and technology, it isn't as bad. It's just that I have to get a shot every three months. Wow. But I still can't necessarily eat fish. It's just for me to be able to tolerate it when I go to the stores or... Whenever I walk through an area that somebody who had fish was in. Okay. All right. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, before before I end up going off on a whole tangent about you <laughs> fishing food, tell us a little bit about you, how you got it started in track. Because like I say, we didn't mention you on that school from Bernard Road. You've been going for years. So how did, how did you get started? Um, I actually went to a summer camp and I wanted to do dance with my um cousins and then i was like okay you know what i don't have much coordination so let me not go across there let me go into swimming Mm. and they didn't want to put me in swimming so i was like okay y'all think i go into go to something that i don't want to go to bed which i sit down the whole time while i hell so (laughs) that's what i did and then um delron anus and snickers they basically conned me and they told me that if I do a few exercises after the lunch session, they'll take me over to swimming and try and swim me with somebody else cross that I actually wanted to do track. So I did a few of the exercises and some of the little runs and they never tried and swim me over. So... Is that you do good? <laughs> That's all it is. It's divine intervention. Yeah. I'm grateful for it now, but then I was like, these lying piece of socks. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine this, you have a whole career off of people lying to you. That's, I, I probably shouldn't say that. That's a but. serious thing. <laughs> That's a serious thing. With all the records broken and the awards you got, like, do you feel like it was destined? I 
yeah, I do. I mean, because I wouldn't say I would have found track and field outside of that avenue because I wouldn't have. Because I don't go outside a lot. I'm not really that much sociable or people's person the way I appear to be on TV. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, social media and TV is, like, my alter ego. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm not that friendly and I'm not that approachable, honestly. I <laughs> 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 Does that translate into the competitive spirit? <laughs> yeah, because I mean, from a junior age, I think everybody could have seen like I was very full of myself, and I'm I still am. <laughs> uh-huh. That's them sprinters. That's them sprinters. We appreciate the honesty. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, so <laughs> my attitude, and then I was like, what? This is something where I could act like I used to the top notch and nobody criticized me for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, rally the troops is all about me. <laughs> <laughs> you're all over there, you're all over there. This is me. I'm the star. I the star. Man. So, I, I told one of my teammates today, anywhere I go, I'm the main character, even in your show. <laughs> That's how you gotta be. Especially in drag. Like, you got love that to do it. I saw a video. I saw a video with you, I think, maybe last month or month before last, on Mafflet's, um Instagram. You were training Julio Jones. Speak about that. Like, how, how was that experience? And, like, what, what, what exactly were you teaching him? I saw what I was doing. I did that sprint um, formations. With Julio, we was doing sprints, um, some sprint technique stuff, because he is a wide receiver. And even though his running style is way different than what we do as track athletes, sprinting is still sprinting. And that mm-hmm. when mechanics is going to transfer through all sports, because what I tell people on a daily basis is like track and field is the base of every sport. I don't care what you do. You have to do something dealing with track wise because swimmers have to work on their breathing. That's, that's something you learn through running and everybody else basically have to run so (laughs) he basically was just learning like basic sprint mechanics like lifting your knees and how you actually pump through the dry phases and stuff like that even though his dry phase isn't as long as my dry phase it still basically has the same mechanisms and mechanics Mm -hmm. and strategy wise through it and we were doing that because i then took up a um ambassadorship role with mark fit so that's how we both linked with um, Jimmy. And we basically was just working together, doing a nice collab. I thought we might do football. Like <laughs> <Fly, laughs> football Olympics. <laughs> Let's say Olympics, what is it? 2024? Hold on. I think it's 2028. 20, 28? Yeah, fly football. I think so, yeah. Listen, uh, so we, re- we recruited you for the team. Yeah, man, she got it. All right, she <laughs> on the team. We have our wife. right now. You know, I have the aggression. The problem is, it's like when you talk of me, Ah, you take what I'm doing to get back because I all about energy. So you so, gotta play defense. <laughs> <laughs> you can put on defense. You can put on defense. Yeah. <laughs> Don't talk to me too hard because then I might do a little, mm, and then I can say, you know what? I come for you and your children. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, so can you give us just a little bit of insight? Like, what what was like? I'd say the toughest part of track and field for you. Um, basically my, the toughest part of track and field for me was the transition from a junior level to a senior level and the injuries. That was a very tough and pinnacle point for me. And it did sort of change my character and demeanor towards track and field and also life in general. So basically like as a junior, I started track and field in 2009 and I signed my first professional contract in 2011, 2012. So I didn't spend that much time as a junior and everything is like stages in life. You have to go through all the stages before you could actually say you're a professional. And I skipped basically every stage there was and went straight in being a professional. And I just started track and field in 09 to go get a contract about three years later. It was terrible. So I should have actually went to school and well, went to college and actually run for college instead of just attending a college to get a degree. Mm-hmm. And then let college help me and actually groom me a mm-hmm. little bit to go into the adult world. So I just went from being a child 
to being an adult. And at that time, I was like 17, 18, training with 30-year-olds. So like our mindsets were so completely different. Yeah. And then I picked up an Achilles injury, basically like 2010-ish. I started to have an Achilles problem, but we didn't really know what it was. 2011, 2012, we actually learned like, hey, it was an Achilles problem. It is an Achilles problem. And the Achilles thing has just blossomed from there. But naturally, like, I'm a person, I want to compete so much because, like I said, like, that's my time for me to shine about myself and not be criticized for me making an environment about myself. So because I bask in that sort of environment, I sort of would lie to say I'm not in this level of pain just so I could compete. And that then became more detrimental to all I got because nobody was correcting technique and teaching me anything because I was, I already had so much speed Mm -hmm. and they basically didn't want to risk me being slow for one or two years and for me to flourish on, which that's what my coach basically did. Now he corrected things more and more, but that six year span was detrimental to my career from when I was a junior to when I came to Jamaica that in six years, like my personality went like I took like big dives in my personality, but I hit it well because when I went out in public, I still put on that mask of saying like, oh, everything's okay, everything's fine, whatnot. But like, of course, people didn't see me speak about myself as highly anymore. But they just thought it's like, oh, she got older, so she's more mature, not even mature more. I just was taking a lot of L's and I was being baptized so much that I basically was drowning because they wasn't letting me up for air. <laughs> 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 Wow. Because I went from Achilles to hamstring, hamstring back to Achilles, and then I picked up a smart hernia. Then I went from a smart hernia into a smart hernia repair, and I basically wanted to stop track and feel. And I even wrote um, the shoe company I was with at the time, Puma email. I wrote the guy who was dealing with me because my coach had something to do with my contract, but because of uh, the relationship me and him had. I never told him anything about it. So I just wrote that person an email. And I was like, hey, I just had this surgery and I had time off from track and field. And I actually was enjoying the time off from track and field. I wasn't making no sacrifices or anything like that. And I was going to school. My grades then picked up. I was able to actually interact with other people in my age group for once in a long time. And I didn't have the pressure of saying like, oh, she got the rising star award, but is she really a rising star? So then I even started to get like imposter syndrome. Like, am I really as good as they said I was? Or was it like what people were saying? Like, oh, I got lucky. And even in Bahamas, especially because I came out of nowhere, basically at the sports center, I heard like a lot of adults when I was a child say like, oh, she's nothing. She ain't going to be nothing. She's just a girl from the ghetto and so on and so forth. So it's like I in the process of trying to prove them wrong in the process of trying to change my life and my family life and improve my career. But I going through so much injuries and stuff like that. Shoe company is like they being understanding, but at the same time, it's business. Like you have to give these people what they give you their money for. Right. They like only could be understanding for so long. And I was I went through six years of injury, like no progression. Nothing. I was basically on a downward spiral in track and field, and people wasn't really noticing it because I am from a small country where I could still shoot at a fast time, make the team, but I wasn't progressing mm. because I was a world junior champion. Like the world juniors that I had was rare. Literally in my era, only three people did that before me, and they had a successful track and field career. And I didn't like I broke that mold of saying that, oh, once you do this as a world junior champion, you're going to be this as an adult. I didn't have it. And it sort of did break me a lot, especially with all the injuries. And then even in um, Oregon. I would say like, oh, I was coming around because Tokyo was crap. Like I went through so much with 
um, the Olympic Association for Bahamas. So, like, I was already out of it mentally at that time. And I just was basically trying to make it for my shoe company, which that, that flopped because I was so out of it mentally. And I was like, let me just try to get here and try to get there. But it still didn't work because I was already exhausted from dealing with Team Bahamas. So then I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to make 2022 the year I come back and do what I need to be done. And you going to regret telling me that I should have retired and so on and so forth. And I came off the curve good. And as I reached into the straightaway to like hit a next gear, which I shouldn't have done, I surely hit a gear in my quad and I ripped through my quad and hip flexor, stopped. And I cried like the entire world mm -hmm. after that. Like semis, I cried. Finals, I cried. When I went to Europe, right after Worlds, I cried. Like I already fixated in my head. Like doctors told me like, oh, you're going to need three months. Three months season done. I was like, nah, I'm not going to end my season on this because I know the next year it's going to be difficult for me to recover from letting that be like the end so like I rushed rehab I rushed treatment everything ended with a good season-ish and then this year everything was going good until I got closer and closer to lane eight or lane nine because that's the lane I was in when I got hurt and it just popped in my head like oh remember the last time you was close to this lane or you was in this lane you hurt yourself so while I there on camera, like trying to be like, yeah, I got this, whatever. I trained for this. And I trying to tell myself everything positive. It still wasn't matching up. Yeah. I was like, I'm sick and tired of this BS. I'm lame. I just look at myself and I'd be like, do I, do I have a pleasure for pain? Because every day I wake up <laughs> and I introduce mm -hmm. myself knowingly. <laughs> To this level of pain and then dealing with basically people talking about me like they know me when they basically know nothing. Right. So I think that's like for me, all in all, that's the hardest part of track and field and sports in general. Wow. <laughs> that's that's awful. That's awful. Hey, bro. I remember you speaking about um you just jumping in from your like junior career to your senior career, right? How has that affected your social life? Like, how do you keep friends? How do you stay in touch? Like, like how was college for you? Like, knowing you had to do college at a different time, as opposed to when your friends did college? Um, I didn't really feel any way until I came back home for a Christmas break. And I actually was hanging out with my friends them that was in college for track and field. And I sit down and I hear their college experience and I'd be like, I don't care working like I don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want yeah. a job. <laughs> they waking up at three. <laughs> yeah, because it's like the people who I was around on a daily basis was like 30 year olds. They was already done with college and stuff like that. Mm. Because when I was in Auburn, Levine Science was in Auburn and we trained together. Mm. And Levine is like a senior. I never said he was old. <laughs> like, see, yo. Yeah. And it's like, I grew up watching these people here compete. Exactly. But now I train in with them, and they have a totally different mindset than a 17, 18 year old. Yeah. So I conformed myself to be more mature with them. And then when I came to being like with my friends who I was in Club Monaco with, I was just sitting down there like, uh, why are you like? <laughs> and then I was like, you know what? I can't push them to the side because they actually my friends. These people are just people who I train with who are way older than me, who basically my mentors. So I then went outside of my comfort zone to socialize with actual college students. And my go-to thing is like whenever people invite me out, I would say no. But whenever they invited me out, I was like, yeah, I'll come. So I would go. And then they'd be like, oh, we'll drive. I'd be like, no, I'll drive myself. 
<laughs> yeah. Correct. When you ready to go, you ready when to go. When I ready to go, it's, it's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, that's what I did. But then it's still, like I said, it's like, I'm not the best people's person. And I wouldn't say, like, I am shy, but I am reserved in some sense. As much as I like to talk, I am reserved in a certain amount of sense to say, I'm not just going to go out there and be extremely friendly. That's not my zone or personality. So it was like hard to balance. But at the same time, too, it's like I don't have a big group of friends. I tell people like I have like probably like three, four friends. Everybody else, they associates. So that's well. <laughs> that's, that's a good way to keep it. So I got ox. After all that we, we talked about, what is it that made you push on to... Go to the event of the events, the Olympics once again. Um, it's because 2012 was my first Olympics from which was in my world junior year. And because I had an Achilles problem then, I was like, okay, I want to go to the next Olympics because it was very it was a great experience. I loved 2012 Olympics. It still is my favorite and best Olympics thus far. Um 2016. I was going through the motion to tell the truth because I just had surgery and I went to the Olympics to meet contract obligations and stuff like that. So I know I wasn't going to do anything. Honestly, in 2016, I wasn't even on track mode then. And 2021, well, 2020, the pandemic came. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's a rough one. Pandemic came. Drop, drop the big bomb on me. <laughs> <laughs> Shoe companies then started um, cutting and making. They had then had to make their numbers matter. So the easiest people to lose money and pull money from was athletes at that time. So when I found out about it, I was like, I definitely not want to get cut. Like I wasn't doing nothing. So I definitely knew a cut was coming. And I was already making improvements. So I was like, you know what? 2021 is going to be the Olympic for me. And then I went through some stuff with the BOC. And I tried to stay motivated and positive in that direction. But it was still like too much chatter and too much extra fighting, honestly. So it was like, I was trying to stay focused, but I wasn't. So I learned what I did wrong then. This Olympic season, I'm hoping that I wouldn't have to deal with all of that. I finally made a finals at Worlds. So now I am on a medal hunt for this Olympics. And hopefully fourth time is the charm. So, <laughs> and technically, this fourth time is like the third time. Yeah, you see? So we still on, we still on track. Still on Dang. But what would you give, if you have any advice uh, for young track athletes or just young athletes in general, what would that one piece of advice be? Mainly, what I tell people all the time is don't worry about what nobody else say you can and cannot do because the dream that you have, they don't share. Some people don't even remember their own dreams. And mm -hmm. honestly, because someone else didn't achieve their pinnacle point, the easiest thing to do is tell somebody else, oh, what you um, view for yourself is dumb. You should go do this, go do that. Tell them F off. Like, what's for you is for you. What you, sh I believe in having a life with no regrets. So my whole thing is, if this is what I want to do, I'm going to push myself 110% and then some in that direction. And when I already finished in that avenue, if it didn't work out, cool. But at least I could say I tried. Because nobody wants to live and be like, oh, only if I did this. Only if I stick with this longer. No, I want to know like, okay, I tried this avenue. I tried that avenue. I tried doing it this way. I tried doing it that way. And the end is the end. So I enjoy it. And just do it for you. When you decide to walk away from something, walk away from it. Even though sports don't stay that way, but <laughs> yeah. very true. Yeah, because sometimes sports just be like, "Bye, girl." <laughs> yeah, <very laughs> Say this on our terms. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> try to take it away from you. But that's that's brilliant though. If you were to do anything differently now, um, looking back at the years that you've had, is there one thing that you would do differently or would you keep it all the same? No, I would have definitely went to college before going pro. I would have went to college first. I feel as if I did miss a lot. Even I feel as if like I doing sports as a child, you give up a lot of your childhood. Even though you build memories, you still give up a lot of childhood activities. And I basically feel as if I threw away my entire teenage years trying to be an adult and do adult stuff, handle adult business when I was just a child. So I definitely would have gone back to college and enjoy the frat parties, the sororities, everything. Getting a little bit of trouble, stress with my parents some more, and then be like, bam, time to be an adult. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's about it. But all in all, I still think the path that I chose was the path for me, even though like I I definitely could have seen what I did wrong and things that I'm still doing wrong. But that's just like mistakes is would make a great story. So, yep. Yeah, man, you just got to keep writing, keep writing. And even like you mentioned the childhood. So what is it that you do now for fun? Mm boring individual you know like <laughs> you're lying i don't believe yeah, you yeah she knows she's have so fun man i don't, I don't, I don't, I don't believe you yeah, yeah. like okay let, let me tell the truth mm -hmm. i'm not lying but i do for me i'm a person like i could sit at home after training and just read books but that's because like i travel so much and then i go to tra i train six days out of the week so that's a lot on its own because I wake up from four o'clock in the morning to go to training for five something. And I'm always late to training, but <laughs> I, I'm there by five. If, live I. I is it, is it if she live far? <laughs> no, I, 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 live, I live about 10 minutes away from training. That's the problem. Wow. Right yeah, that's, that's the, the problem. problem. That's too problem. close. You're too close. Yep. 10 minutes left from training and it takes me about 30 to get there. Like, wow. <laughs> so I reached the training about by 5, 10 now. So I probably should be there from about 5 o'clock. So I'm, taking, I'm only like 10 minutes late, and which isn't that bad. So I don't leave training in the morning sometimes until after 9 a.m. And then I'm back in training again by one two o'clock and i don't leave again until like five or six and that's literally like me sneaking out like i wasn't done with everything i just be like oh i tired of seeing your face I don't know. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's basically it so like training basically consumes my entire day because before i didn't think i was a professional but coming here in this training environment and actually seeing how they do things, it definitely made me a professional. Let me know that this is a lifestyle and not a hobby. So this is all day. And because it's all day, it's like I don't want to do anything once I reach home. Right. I'm like those adults. I need something from the grocery store, but I already home. So you know what? Meal change. <laughs> like, yeah. That's just literally how I operate. But I try to add a little bit of entertainment stuff into my life. Like, if I have friends that come into Jamaica, I'll probably go out with them somewhere. And I added an extra fitness routine into my weekend. A lot of my teammates say they don't see the need for it because they honestly don't never see me using it. But I added it in anyway. So hopefully, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> It will, it will pan out. It will pan out <laughs> for sure. It will definitely pan out, man. It, it, it's look like it looks like it's working well for you, though. Um, and I can see that you do have a love for the sport. So, how was how do how would you go about like getting people to find what it is that they love? Um, honestly, I believe everybody generally knows what they love once they get introduced to it one or two times. I agree. Because I tell people that's like my method of life is if I'm introduced to something new, I don't just try it one time. I try it about two or three times before I honestly could say like, okay, this isn't for me. Because the first time you go in there judgmental and you go, you already came in there with a 
notation that somebody else gave you. It isn't something that you generally knew for yourself because you never experienced it. So after the first time you already got your own experience and you sort of got your feet wet a little bit, the second time go in and try learning the way of the line. And then the third time after to use the boss and then you'll just know if this for you or not. And if it's not, then skedaddle over to the next activity and see if that works out for you too. Let's get over to swimming in. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Get off to it. <laughs> but honestly, like that's how I live my life though. Like my I, I'm pretty sure like my mom doesn't like that that's how I view things and do stuff because she's like super conservative, which I, I'm not. So <laughs> like I don't know what you mean you are conservative. The Bahamian parent mom. <laughs> my mom is like I remember before like when I was coming from college, I mean, my friends still was going out. I wanted to stay at a hotel. And my mom was like, no, you can stay at the house and it could be okay. And I was like, you sure? She, so she said, yeah. So we came back about midnight. I don't drink. So of course, like, it wasn't like, oh, I was making a bunch of noise. But it's just like, I knew I was coming back after that. And she was like, that's what you're wearing? I was like, yeah, we're going to a club. Like, <laughs> she let me leave, but the next morning, oh I'm yeah, like, oh yeah, like, she want to be like, oh, Alfred, you see what your daughter wearing? She 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 over here looking as if I don't know who raised her, but because it can't be it can't be my daughter. Like, it's the same story everywhere. Whoa. After dark is Jurassic Park. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I'm fine. <laughs> oh my god, I, I am God's favorite angel. They have it. Less she is than, protected. Less than highly favored. She's protected. Exactly. <laughs> so that means I ain't doing nothing but partying. Exactly. Now, if you want to introduce yourself to Trouble High, I am Trouble. But. <laughs> <laughs> Alter ego kicking in. Wait. Off the no, but, uh, one, that one. guy is not. <laughs> and I mean, like, of course, like, I did. At first, I had the viewpoints of my parents growing up. But then I went to college and I was living alone. And then I realized like I didn't actually know who Anthony was. So I tried a little bit of everything to see like what I would vibe with. Of course, like some things I definitely know, like, yeah, that ain't gonna never be me because I see, I watch movies like uh, that ain't gonna be me. <laughs> but I would go to parties and I'd be like, all right, I'll go to a little park party here. I'll take a little trip here. I did spring break. I went to strip clubs and stuff like that. So it was like, okay, I got the, a little bit of everything. I knew what I like. I know what I like to see, what type of environment I like to be in. I learned that strip clubs has the best wings. So it's like, <laughs> I was living well. life. They <laughs> got some good food. A full and complete life with the chicken wings. Gotta have the chicken wings. There you good. You good. <laughs> Put the little hot sauce on the side. Oh, God. Okay, hold on. on the, so, so dry wings are not wet? Yeah, I don't want my wings them too wet because, you know, sometimes they don't be cooking the wings them right. And you can better tell it if it's dry. Mm. And the thing that people don't know is if your wings ain't cooked fully true, you can send that back and that meal is not free. That's only in America? Or? I was about to ask. <laughs> no, Jamaica too. Oh. But that's like customer service 101. Even in Bahamas, I went somewhere before too and I didn't like how the the meat was and that became a comp meal because that ain't what I wanted. Hold on, what is this? Oh. What is this? <laughs> I need to know. Send it send it to us off here, because they ain't been <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's true. <laughs> so yeah. it's good because it seems like you had even though you would have gone through the whole pro split going from junior to senior I'd look like that. You had the chance to experience life and to grow and get to know Anthony. But what I want to know is, what are, what is your favorite place that you would have traveled to? I think it changes every time. But for right now, because I'm like in the K-drama thing, and i getting into a little bit of manga and anime, I would definitely... That's it, that's it. That's, that's it. it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I would say like, I went to um, Seoul. I, yeah, I went to Seoul, and I liked it. Um, South Korea, I went to Daegu. I like Daegu. China, I like China, but that's because I like the silk market and I like the shop and oh. bargain. Yeah. So it was like, it was like, <laughs> deals on deals. 
Yeah, so when they taught me, they was like, okay, you got to break your money down in small sections and then you got to put them in separate parts. You got to remember where you put everything. Yeah. So if you know you only put $10 on the left side and you tell a guy, like, all you have is $10, like, that's what you pull out. Mm. You kind of let me see a 20 because not a bill go up. It's but the that's the only reason why I like China because... I was like, look at you coming to high up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Life lessons. Real dog. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. But now I got to ask. Because I, you said it, not me. You said you come to metal next year. That's what you said, right? Yes, I'm on a metal hunt. All right. So I got to ask, what is the one key that you are adding to your plan this year? Or next year as well? To Not only metal, I want to say gold to get gold um right now what i am trying to do is because i know my biggest problem is always injury and not being healthy mm. and this season i had a big problem with my achilles especially going be into worlds like two weeks before before i got a massive cramp of my achilles and it just wasn't recovering so i basically was running on one foot and i just wasn't telling my coaches so it's basically like just to fix my Achilles and my star. And I'm actually trying like very hard to minimize my personality so that I could actually intake the information that my coaches give me. Even though I only could like eliminate my personality for so much and for so long. Mm -hmm. But I feel as if like every little bit counts and... If every day I actually make like a genuine effort to listen to them and, and to infiltrate that information and actually integrate it in what I'm doing, I feel as if it would make a greater difference. I agree. I yeah. agree. Got to be intentional about, yeah. Yeah, intentional <laughs> about you know, learning and taking taking the, the criticism. Yeah. The thought, all the tips this is given. It's hard, though. It is. It's very hard. Yeah, and then I even added um, mental training back into my um, training program time. So basically, like, Sundays, I do a little bit of meditation. I'm trying to get myself up to, like, an hour meditation time. But every time I reach the 15 minutes, I'd be falling asleep. But <laughs> <laughs> 15 minutes is a good time, I believe. I feel. Yeah, every time I reach the 15 minutes, I, like, be falling asleep. But And then I even... Um, Thought a therapist. I already have a therapist here in Jamaica, but I decided that I wanted a therapist like who I don't know, who doesn't know me or anything. So um, I'm actually doing like a telephone therapist thing where we can video call and phone calls and stuff like that. They're based in the UK and they're actually a performance therapist. So because I, like I said, when I got that injury and I realized that I was replaying that race in my head even when i was in other races mm. i realized that the problem and it's it's a problem that i can't solve on my own and i feel as if like i do need some extra help for that because of course my coach is going to tell me like oh you should just do this and do that and once you improve these things here it's like it's to go away mm -hmm. i don't think so so i'm going i got somebody else and i like his method so far so sticking with him, and I have a therapist here in Jamaica. That's good. Hopefully those things like add up. Yeah, because I do believe like mental health is extremely big and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because sports and everything in life is way more mental than physical. Because once you tell yourself you can and you can't do something, you instantly fester those things in. And then I was doing a little bit of reading on like how the brain works and basically. Whenever you say things, even if it's not about yourself directly, your brain fosters that in to say like, oh, this information for me. And it implies that into your life and your way of doing things and stuff like that. So I'm trying to stay like away from like negative thoughts and negative environments and stuff like that. Even though I think like my music choice isn't the best music choice. But <laughs> Sometimes you need that motivation, man. <laughs> Kevin Gates, is, Kevin Gates is my dog, right? <laughs> I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that. <laughs> Kevin Gates is my dog, so he's going nowhere. <laughs> but that's like basically like my thing. 
Okay. Oh, and I I, I added um Kai Jones to my playlist. Like, oh, oh, oh my god! Oh man! My playlist, like, she got that like, infinity. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I gotta ask. You talked about taking your personality out the equation, but we know. There's Ego. some people you go against. Some personalities. Them egos out the roof. The thing is, is that I have a very big ego. So. I know, you say it. So. Yeah, I like, the thing is with me, it's like, I know my flaws. So, mm. so when people point it out, I'm like, you ain't, you ain't telling me nothing new. Will I acknowledge it? No, but I know it. Yeah. <laughs> like, how do you stay focused and even keel when you got them other people on the side of you as well? I, I we know who they is. I gotta mention their names. <laughs> Actually, like I remember in in Budapest because we because we good friends now. I could say it because I know she knows that I didn't mean it the way it came off. Okay, okay, okay. So we was in the call room for Budapest for the two hundred meter finals and. Generally, like, because so much people is be, like, going through their race plans and visualizing their races and be quiet. And quietness actually builds intensity. Mm -hmm. And Shakari was like, gosh, and he's so quiet. Like, that's how y'all is all the time. <laughs> and she was doing so much talking. So I was like, girl, shut up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I bluntly said it. I was like, girl, shut up. Like, it was our time. Yeah. <laughs> And we all burst out laughing, and me and Talu, we started talking. Well, me and Sharika, we always talking. And Shakira was like, I don't like how you tell me shut up. I was like, I didn't mean it that way. Like, But I yeah. honestly didn't mean it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. But honestly, everybody who has a big personality on TV, they actually don't. Like, Shakira is completely different than what social media projects her as. Um, the same thing with Sharika, completely different than with social media projectiles. Talu, she is with social media projectiles. <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah. yeah, but you just learn, like, everybody have their own, like, strife and ego about them, like, their own alter personality. Mm -hmm. Because the shy laid back people don't sell in sports, like. That, that's not going to want a shoe company to want you. Yeah. A meat director not necessarily going to want you. And then we in this social media era where you basically have to put out a personality before quote unquote fans give you a personality. And then everybody be like, yeah, I see that's how that person is for real when they saw nothing. So it's like you have to give them something before they tie something onto you. Mm, I didn't think of that. Yeah, that's, that's actually, that's a lot. That's a lot to do with. <laughs> <laughs> and people be thinking like it's so easy because even today, I was speaking to one of my friends and I was like, oh, I'm so tired. She's like, how can you be tired from just running and gym in? And I was like, <laughs> <"Look all up." laughs> yeah, and I was like, if being fit was so easy, we wouldn't have obese people in the world. Exactly. Damn, I thought I was gonna say that. That's, that's not a cancel thing right now. <laughs> I mean, I know. I think so. It's the truth, though. It's like yeah. if my job was so easy, it wouldn't be. Everybody would be fit. Like everybody would be runners. Everybody would play baseball, softball, basketball, whatever. Because like, oh, it's so easy. But it's not because while we're doing this, we have to entertain. And on top of that, then we have to then say when. People who don't know anything about me never met me outside of TV to be like, oh, she look as if like she has like such a big personality and like she's not a nice person and so on and so forth. It's like you don't know me, like, exactly. <laughs> you don't know me, but then you have so much to say. And you have to deal with that because you could see the comments and you just have to sit down and like oh, I'm gonna leave this comment right here. But inside, you want to get your Twitter fingers activated. Because sometimes I just want to be like Kanye on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, when they see you in person, they want to smile and get autographed. The, the thing is, if I see you write something about me, mm. I'm going to wait till I see you in person. Because you can't screenshot that moment. Mm. So I'm going to be like, you think you're going to get a picture from me? <laughs> and I saw what you said in 2016? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say no more, I, I changed. <laughs> 
Yeah, but I tell people it's like my my worst trait is that I hold grudges. So, and I have people all the time tell me like, oh, that's you carry such a heavy burden in your heart. No, I don't. I sleep well at night every night. So, <laughs> you use that fuel. That, yeah, like if you turn around and tell me like, oh, I'm not going to be anything, I'd be like, okay, bet. You know who's not going to be anything? Your child, because I'm gonna take full of demo every time. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so every time I lie, I'm across from you, I am beating you to beat you. I beat you to make yes, sure. I can't eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's that Jordan mentality. That's that Jordan mentality for real, though. <laughs> that's like my energy. It. Because, like, even in 2021, like, I would say before 2021, I was like, I wouldn't say like I was comfortable, but I got extremely passive because I am afraid of peeing. And I've been in a lot of pain. So when I went through what I went through with the Olympic Association, where people was like, oh, she should retire and she should stop, so on and so forth. I was like, okay. I cried about and everything. And I let them know, like, what you was doing to me is unfair. But one thing I don't do is cry in vain. Like, you're not going to get my tears for free. Ain't nothing in life is free. I even pay for oxygen. So you're going to bite your words and I was like either you apologize to me or every time you see me it's going to be a problem so <laughs> they might have thought like I meant it like in fighting terms but I actually managed to say okay you didn't want me on this team mm -hmm. but I'm a qualified surpass this team and you could want me on one of your smaller teams and you know what I'm gonna say no no mm. and what you can do about it nothing because why you ain't got nobody to replace me <laughs> <laughs> who better than me nobody okay nobody. okay then we got it there nobody <laughs> that, that's how i look at things like if you feel as if you better than me and you bring that energy to me cool mm -hmm. step up your game because i want to step up mine and like even what i tell people now like even before I don't care how old you is. You could be a junior and you come to me and you be like, oh, Anthony, I'm going to beat you. When? Because <laughs> even in your dreams, I win it. The gold medal coming, ladies and gentlemen. The gold medal coming. The gold medal coming. The gold medal coming. The gold medal coming. I love the motivation, man. But just to say you got some, um, I know, this is, is going to be some special, a special, I, uh, special one. You looking for a husband? For me? Yeah. Oh, I don't believe in marriage. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> there <ends> the show. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that one. Yeah. Let, let me explain it to you. Because right. I watch so much stuff where uh, it don't work out. Sometimes the prenup don't be successful. I believe in marriage if you have more assets than me. So if you have more assets than me, baby, we could work this out. <laughs> mm, Justin. Mm. Bring the whole table, but <laughs> it was, it's just gotta you gotta protect yourself is what it is. Yeah, and it's just like it's not even like the fact of like protecting myself. It's like I just not saying like I spent a commitment, but it's like I don't want to make somebody feel as if they obligated to be with me entirely when they know they no longer have interest. So I feel as if like not being married is like a lot of people like way out because I could see myself like. I can have a child with someone and not be with them because I understand feelings change over a period of time. I may become a completely different person in 10 months oh. than what you knew. And then you'd be like, oh, you know what? I really don't like this girl who weighs just 135 pounds. Like, <laughs> she really thinks she is something else. So it's like, you know what? Let's just co-parent. Or we can coexist. And then I don't like to see people all the time. So... <laughs> If you want to get married, you <laughs> two homes mm. on the same property. Oh. And when I tired of seeing you, you like one of my coworkers. Honestly, realize COVID taught us that a lot of people should not have been married. Mm, just getting deeper than I thought it was going to get. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Aunt, I have a perfect show for you to come on where we can talk about these things. We're carrying and set it up. Okay, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we have one final question. We want to know what it is Antonique is most fanatical about right now. 
Oh, what's contact? <laughs> I mean, whatever contacts. I should have my next question after you would. Yeah. Whatever contacts you want. Oh, you want to ask the question first? <laughs> <laughs> no, because when they ask this, we got to answer. Oh, <laughs> Lord, I know what you're going to But anyway, <laughs> any contacts that you would like to use? Anything. Um, My biggest thing right now is just like having fun, enjoying life, and keeping my peace. Even though I wake up every day deciding to be a problem, but like, look at me, I am the problem. She ain't come to play, son. <laughs> yeah, like I, I know it's the problem. <laughs> there you have it. There you have it, folks. Just want your peace. Fanatical about keeping a peace, <laughs> not your peace, her peace. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> there you have it. The wonderful, full of personality, Anthony Straw. We appreciate you. We appreciate Listen, you. We're looking for big things and the gold medal coming to us very, very soon. Exactly. So please, Paul. A medal. We, we going for our medal first and then we build in because remember, Sharika running 21.5. Man, you can that, get that with, you know, she got it. She got it. All right, fair. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right, smart, smart, measurable goals. I got it. I got it. Yeah, I got to measure my way in. So. Perfect out the box, man. <laughs> <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Please let us know anything that you want to hear from us. The feedback is greatly appreciated. If there's anyone that you want to see us have on the Fanatic Islanders, do let us know. And don't forget to follow Anthony Strong on social media and support her in any way that you can. Thank you all. This is Fanatic Islanders signing off. <laughs>